Hi there folks, Borislav247 here with another Days Gone Horde series video where I focus all my attention on one specific horde. And on this video it's the Solomon Hill Horde that gets my full attention. Right then, some information about this horde. This horde is 125 strong. They are located in the northwest area of the Highway 97 region. And this is a horde that I like to refer to as an endgame horde. Basically, you will never see this horde until you have completed the main Days Gone game. Now, here are the locations in which to find this horde. First of all, most important, the daytime location. From there, this bridge section here is where they go to at night to feed. And finally, you have their night water location. All in all, there are five easy kill locations for this horde, and two of them are special indeed, as you can take out two hordes. So, let's get to this. Right then, as always, folks, I like to start with what I call a conventional method, a way that most people would normally look to take out this horde. But this one, as with some of my conventional methods, has a twist. And this is where it comes in. It's basically just position of this bike. Um, you can't stop the entire horde by any means from getting uh, to the area past uh, this log. But by positioning the bike in this manner, and then when I come over to this area again, I will position myself behind the bike. You will pretty much stop um, any of the horde getting over to you if they're in small enough numbers. So this takes place during the daytime. And this is actually quite a quick method of taking them out. And it's also a surprisingly safe one. So I'm basically going to start by getting the horde's attention. And what better way than by uh, hitting them with some gun play. Especially as they're just coming out of the caves. So at this point they're not really um, very well spread out. So I want an attractor in place. This will do two things. One, it will slow down the horde. And secondly, it will give me time to get into position. And not only that, while they're still over that attractor, they make for a very easy target so I'm basically headhunting at this point and this should actually take out most of the numbers yep what I've got left isn't going to be very much because I'm positioned behind the bike they just don't get over and that's it a very nice easy job done indeed okay on to the next method right then folks on to the first easy kill location and this takes place during the daytime now, the setup for this one is a very easy one indeed. And it is another area that you basically just require to have the bike and climb a rock area. And it's up here. And this, this area is absolutely fantastic because you have a number of rock sections that you can stand on. But I do recommend that you stand on one that is a bit lower. This one here is ideal because the horde knows exactly where you are. There are one or two other areas of... Uh, this rock section that I'm at, that if you're up just slightly too high, the horde just don't quite know where you are, so they will not congregate nicely like what they are doing for me right now. And the beauty of this one here as well is that, you'll notice here, it doesn't actually look like there's 125 of them. They're actually going right around this rock area, so because they're spacing themselves out so well, you don't have any problems at all with them doing their uh, World Wars and Stealth Tactics. There's just simply not enough of them. And uh, once I've taken care of the ones over this side, you'll see what I mean. So, yep. And here we go. There's the rest of them over here, so... And now, they're very small numbers indeed, so... This shouldn't take long from this point. The only thing that you will find is, sometimes you have to do a little bit of manoeuvring, um, with uh, the gun and also on the rock area itself because sometimes the rock area actually gives the, the freakers a little bit of protection but uh, no, there we go now I shouldn't be too long with them now yep just that one left and there we go that's a very nice way indeed to take out this horde okay on to the next location Right then, on to easy kill location number two, and this also takes place during the daytime. 
Now, this one is a very clever one indeed. It doesn't involve the bike in any way, and it's all about getting to this specific location. And just watch how this one plays out, because this one is, uh, it's a lot of fun to do, and it is quite clever. It makes um, very good use of the immediate surroundings. So, I just want the horse full attention, taking out a few of their numbers, and I'm looking to run over here, and just before I get to the edge of this cliff here, do a dive roll and you land at this spot here. I always make sure to look around just in case any of the freakers have followed me. You sometimes get one or two that get over, but they don't actually manage to get to this rock area. Um, but the rest, <laughs> they're easy pickings indeed. It is just a clean up job from here. This one does work so well. Uh, there are odd occasions where you sometimes don't get the entire board over here. And if you don't, it's not a problem, it's just a case of rinse on your feet, head back up to the cave, whatever is left, entice them out, and then basically do the same again. But on this occasion, I think I have the full board at this area, so, and I have. <laughs> there we go, another job, well done. Okay, on to the next method. Right then, on to the third easy kill location, and this is the first of the nighttime areas. This one is actually going to take place at the night feeding area. And when you see the area that they're at, this will become very clear very quickly as to what I'm going to be doing. Because they feed below the bridge, there is an opportunity to get to a spot that they simply won't be able to touch you. And there's no risk whatsoever of any World War Z style tactics. They simply cannot get to you once you get to the spot. It's basically here, drop down onto this uh, carriage, and that's it. It's all good from here. They will start to congregate over here. Some of them will actually even go into the carriage, but uh, just look at how well they're uh, stacking up here. So, uh, yeah, I think it's time for a new plan all well. This will do the job very nicely, get the numbers done very quickly. Um, this is overkill, I didn't have to use one there, but uh, given how they are positioned down there, it's like, why not? And yeah, from here, I'm just basically going to take out the last of them with gunplay. Oh, <laughs> not required, that is it. <laughs> Job done. Okay, on to the next method. Right then, on to my all-time favourite easy kill location for any horde. This one takes place at the night water area of the Solomon Hill Horde. And the beauty of this one is, you're guaranteed to get two hordes when you take them out at this location. It is actually possible to get three hordes to this location, and I've shown that in a previous video that I called The Perfect Storm. But this is how it goes. I just basically get the Solomon Hill Horde's attention and I'm looking to get the bike up here very quickly off the bike over to this rock section. And that's it. I've got them. And this area is so safe because when they start to get remotely close to you, this is what happens. They just fire themselves off the cliff. <laughs> and because I have two hordes here, uh, because the other one is the Mount Scott Ski Resort Road. Um, their water location and their night feeding location are very close to this rock area, which is why you're guaranteed you're always going to get them. But uh, despite the fact that I have 250 acres to contend with here, there is no risk whatsoever. This is just beautiful. Uh, basically, the ones that actually survive, um, that don't take a bullet as I'm hitting them when they're going down, they basically just loop around, run back up, and they do it all over again. So it is a perfect easy kill location. This, this one really is that good. And uh, gives you one of the most fantastic views you will ever see when you're actually looking down and just watching the figures going down and putting bullets in them as they are. Um, <laughs> it doesn't get much better than this boat. And uh, now the numbers are certainly going down. Look at the pile on them down there. <laughs> what a sight. So, I will just keep going now until I get both hordes. And I shouldn't be far away from getting them now. 
So it'll be interesting to see which uh, horde I take out first. And there we go. That is, it's not the horde I was actually after, but you guaranteed you get them here every time. And there we go. The Solomon Hill horde. That is it. Two hordes for the price of one. Okay. On to the next method, folks. Right then, on to the last easy kill location, and this also takes place at the night water area. Now, for this one, the area that I'm actually going to go to is uh, a rock area. Now, it's not the easiest of rocks to get onto, so I would definitely recommend the previous easy kill location as opposed to this one. But uh, this one potentially can get you two hordes also. You don't always get um, two hordes when uh, taking them up from here because um, the other horde um, that comes into the equation here is the Sagebrush horde, or the Sagebrush point horde, I should say, for its full title. And there they are. They are coming. So <laughs> the beauty of this location, once you're at this height, is you do have a lot of protection. And um, it is worth making sure that we don't manage to get to top areas. So gunplay is very important. But because I have two hordes in effect here, I am using Nathan Molotovs. It is definitely warranted. But now I'm going to go to town just to make sure that I get any nasty surprises. And it's very rarely that you do because you are so high up at this spot. Um, the worst thing about this method really is the, the bike climb in order to get up to the top and making sure that you can actually stay at the top here. It's not as easy as I've made it look. Um, if you're trying this one yourself, just make sure that you follow the line that I took to get up uh, the rock area. So that's a horde that I came to take out, the Solomon Hill horde, but I still have the Sagebrush Point horde left to take out. So. I'm going to keep at this and get the job done. It's a nice added bonus. You don't always get the Sagebrush Point Horde appearing, but on this occasion, two for the price of one. Right then, on to the stealth option. Now, for anyone that wants a good stealth option in order to take out this horde, you're not going to get much better than this spot that I'm going to show. Uh, I take them out during the daytime. No bushes are required because, as I mentioned before, this ledge area up here, and this is what I'm going to use to get the job done, basically, if you're high enough up here, the horde simply cannot see you. So this is the safest stealth method you will ever get. It is also slightly annoying in the fact that they basically um, they don't react the quickest. Because they have no idea what's making the noise, they will eventually come out, but they do take a little bit of coaxing. It is going to be um, getting a flashbang into play here, but it's attractors that are going to have to get the job done here in order to get them out. And then from there, I will just rain down hell upon them. So, okay, they're, they're a bit curious. So that's nice. I'm starting to get the numbers out now. So, yeah, Napalm Molotov, why not? as you can see this is not normal behavior from them they do not have a clue what is going on here they're just reacting to sounds basically now although this is a very good method stealth wise to take them out it's unfortunately one of the slowest methods um, because they really do take a lot of enticing so I'm just going to take the time to uh, hit them with another napalm molotov and I don't think I've got anywhere near this entire horde at this point. So I don't have any problems about using uh, uh, gunplay at this point with uh, that particular one because uh, it's it's not doing much to attract the rest of them. In fact, I'm just taking a quick look with survival vision and yes, there's still a whole load in there. So I'm actually going to have to place this one a little bit further into the cave in order to uh, get the job done. And hopefully this will get the last of them. Yeah, you know what? Might get lucky here. There might be 30 or less. And if that is the case, no, I'm not that bloody lucky. 
Yeah, that's it. I've had enough. <laughs> this should be the last item that I in fact guaranteed it will be. There's no way, there's nowhere near 20 of them there. And that is it. That is a very nice stealth option should you wish to use it. Although it is heavy on your resources. So I do not recommend it, but there it is, folks. Okay, folks, just one more run left to show, and it's just having a bit of fun here. Um, it's a quick method in order to take out the horde, and I'm going to take them out during the daytime. So the only thing that I'm looking to do here is to place the bike at this point, basically to try and limit um, the width of the horde once they start chasing me at that point. So um, truth be told, it will have a limited effect, but I'm going uh, I'm going to run with it anyways, so... Uh, basically hitting them with some grenade action, looking to take them over to this area. I will eventually loop back, but from here, I'm going to hit them hard now with gunplay. Yeah, the bike does a limited job, but um, yeah, it's not the worst. From here, now I'm going to hit them with proximity bombs. This will not take long. Two of them in place, and whatever's left is going to get it with gunplay. And there we go. A very nice way of finishing. That is a Solomon Hill Horde well and truly taken care of. Thank you so much for watching the video and I hope you all enjoyed it.